couple other things we wanted to talk about uh, with you, Nancy. We really wanted to get your your perspective, and 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 let's talk about mentors. Um, we've had a lot of conversations with people about mentoring and how to get a mentor, and there's and there's there's a certain amount of confusion about well, what exactly is a mentor, and particularly about well, how do I get a mentor? Like, you know, is is it a formal thing? Do I have to apply, you know, to be a mentee, um, or you know, uh, or what is it like when I get a mentor? I mean, is it do I get a syllabus? You know, are there lessons? You know, how does it work? Um, but what is what is what is having a mentor mean to you, Nancy? All of the above. So I have had mentoring relationships that have been um, grassroots, just kind of you connect with somebody like you talked about um, to leading somebody to understand that the skills that they had were, in fact, cyber skills. You were mentoring that person. Mm. And so those are just very organic. And you meet somebody and there's a click. And they have some experience that you'll want to get, or you have some experience that you want to share, and you work together to make that happen for somebody. I've also been in formal mentoring programs and built formal mentoring programs mm. where you get paired with somebody based upon some commonality. And then there might be a course that you take to make to get the best you can get out of that mentoring relationship. And you set goals as to this is what I'm trying to get out of this mentoring relationship. And and you go move from there. Mentors don't have to be formal. They can be informal. They can be, I, I saw my mother as a mentor for me. She was a mm. businesswoman who was savvy and smart and managed to balance it all. I learned from watching that. So you don't only have to have one mentor. You can have many at different points in your life. Somebody I mentor today, let me know that they're applying for a job. Surprisingly enough, I'm on the committee for the panel for that job. <laughs> <laughs> I came back and said, I might have to recuse myself from that <laughs> panel because I mentor this person, but you build these relationships. And um, I was thrilled to hear that they were taking some of the advice and suggestions and really putting themselves out there to apply for something that was outside of their wheelhouse, because you know what, they might get that job and they would be great at that job. The mentoring program that I helped build with one of my women in cyber programs um, I actually, one of our targets was to help people break into cybersecurity and get jobs in cybersecurity. And so we attached people that were seasoned, um, that were hiring managers with those that were entry level and just either in college or having graduated or just trying to learn to break in. That's how I got my librarian, mm. uh, for instance, <laughs> from one of those relationships. Great. Uh, so you can absolutely have mentors in many ways. Don't shut the door, learn what you can, but come to an agreement with that person around what are you trying to get out of this and how can they help you? Yeah, yeah. As yeah. a mentee, you are accountable for setting up those times in that relationship. So right. That's what I'll say too, don't, don't think your mentor is going to do that, set up this time with you, take ownership for it and set up time with them. Right. Yes. Thank you. Those are, those are really good insights and, and practical, you know, uh, examples, right, of what a mentor can do for you and, and what that can be like. I, I know some people are very shy about asking somebody to be their mentor. And so, you know, one of the things, you know, Jason and I talk about in the course that we run is that, hey, you need a mentor. However, you know, you, however you get a mentor, you need a mentor. And, and one of the options is to sign up for mentoring and, you know, and that's kind of what we do uh, in our in our hired course, right? And we talk we talk a lot about about mentoring, um, and and really that's what this podcast is about. Is we're if you're listening to this podcast right now, hey, guess what? You're in a mentoring relationship. It's a one to many, right? Because because <laughs> we don't, you know, it's not interactive right now. But but you're getting mentored uh, right now, Jason. What do you, what are you thinking about about mentoring? What can you uh, what what have we what have we not said that's important to say? Yeah, so a couple of things. One, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, this is a form of mentorship. It is a one-to-many form of mentorship. I've had lots of mentors over the years. Some of them are where we actually meet and have lunch once a week and we talk about what's going to be happening. Uh, some of them are just people that I respect and look up to the way they run their businesses or the way they run their certifications or the way they do things. And that's more of the, um, you know, we all, we all have these influences on our life and, and some of those are, you know, a quasi-mentoring relationship. Uh, in, in the case of, you know, this program, uh, for those who, who are listening, if you go to yourcyberpath.com, right on the homepage, you can sign up for Kip's uh, mentor notes which are an email that he sends out every other week that gives you some mentorship in this whole hiring world and how this stuff works as somebody who's a job seeker. So definitely recommend you do that at yourcyberpath.com. 
Now, the other thing I like to talk about when you do mentoring is that, as we said, you can't have multiple mentors. Um, you also need to pick the right level of mentor, right? Um, and this comes down to where you are and where you're trying to go. For instance, if I was a brand new person and I'm trying to break into cybersecurity, having a mentor who is somebody like Mrs. Hunter, who is a VP level, very, very senior person who's been in this business for 15, 20 years, is probably not the right mentor for you. Uh, yes, she can probably open some doors and help you get your first job, but she doesn't really uh, necessarily understand what you're going through on a daily basis and the struggles you're facing because she went through those 10, 15, 20 years ago, right? Same thing with me. Uh, I've been in this business for a long time, and so if you're a brand new person who just got their first certification, you're trying to break in, I'm a little more removed, at least in my personal experience. Um, now, I happen to be very involved in this again because Kip and I run this podcast and, and we work with students all the time, so I'm still very in touch with that. But in general, if you're talking to somebody who's at a very senior level, they don't necessarily get it. Uh, for what you're going through right now and your struggles because the industry changes. I remember when I first got in the industry back in 2000, 1999, 2000, coming out of high school, nobody cared if you had a college degree. Everything was certifications, right? If you got your, your Microsoft Certified System Administrator, you could get a job. Then we went through a period where nobody would talk to you unless you had a bachelor's degree. Then it started pushing towards master's degrees. Now there's a kickback and there's a lot of people who don't care about degrees again and they just care about certifications. And so these things do go in uh, ebbs and waves and sometimes if you're with somebody who's a very senior person, they may not understand that. So what I like to do is find somebody who's about two to five years ahead of where you are. It's close enough that you can start mimicking their career path in yourself um, and be able to see things and they're not so far removed that they can't necessarily help you, but they're still senior enough that they can open some doors for you because right. they already have some connections as well. So right. I find that to be kind of the sweet spot. Um, if you do have somebody who is very senior, uh, I know this is uh, very popular, especially in minority communities. Um, whether that is black, Latino, women, those different uh, population segments, there is uh, this people at higher levels are trying to help bring in new people into that. And so you do have some senior folks with junior folks. Um, totally good, but I also recommend you get somebody who's just a couple of years ahead of you because I think you're going to get more benefit out of that uh, on a daily basis. And when you do mentorship, as you said, it can be uh, you know very laid back. We're just going to meet over coffee and lunch. Or it can be very strict where you kind of say, okay, these are my goals for the next seven days. And then in seven days, you're going to meet back with that mentor and they're going to verify you did those things. Um, and it can be very structured. Uh, so it really does depend. Um, but for me, I always find that, you know, that two to five year point of somebody being ahead of you is kind of the sweet spot.